my channel. If you are new here, my name is Casey and I'm the designer behind the indie sewing pattern company, Pattern Scout. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you everything that I made in 2021. Well, I say everything. Most of the things that I made in 2021. When I first sat down to do an inventory of all of the things that I made last year, I really didn't feel like I had made that much. But when I started pulling everything together, it actually was quite a few garments. I think on average, I probably made about three garments per month, which I think is pretty good. And I've actually worn a lot of the things on this rack quite a bit. So I've definitely kind of settled into my garment sewing style a little bit more this past year and sort of embrace the things that I just really enjoy wearing above the things that maybe I see on Pinterest and think, oh, I'd really like to wear that. And then I never end up wearing it. And I do have a couple of garments like that in this mix. So most of the garments here are actually patterns that I sell in my shop. And that is just because I'm always sewing samples for the patterns. And I do try to design patterns that uh, are things that I actually wanna wear. I have a few things that are self-drafted that I haven't made into patterns, but maybe will make into patterns. Stay tuned, eventually, one day, maybe. And this summer I made a few items from McCall's that I actually ended up loving and are very beginner-friendly patterns if that's something that you're looking for, so stay tuned for that. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing that I made, I think this was the first thing that I made in 2020 was my puffer coat. I love this coat. I wear it all the time. So this jacket actually was sort of a pattern hack from the Cozy Jacket. And the Cozy Jacket was a pattern that I ended up selling at the beginning of the year. It was one of the first patterns I launched in 2020, or sorry, 2021. If you happen to go back and watch the video for my process of making this coat, you'll kind of see some of the modifications that I made to that pattern, but it's basically using that exact pattern before I turned it into you know, a graded pattern. And I love it because it has lots of pockets and they're really big pockets and I don't have to carry a purse because when you're wearing a really bulky coat like this, it's kind of annoying to carry a purse because it's just like, where do you put it? And if you do like crossbody, it's just like constricting. Anyway, so I wanted to have lots of pockets in this jacket for that reason, and actually, Oh yeah, I've got my sunglasses in here right now. They just fit right in there. And then I've got really large pockets at the waist here. And I can put my wallet in there really easily, my keys, my mask, everything. So this, this coat is actually one of the favorite things that I've ever made. I'm very proud of this make. Okay, so next up is the cozy jacket. And actually, hold on one second, I just remembered something. This is my first sample of the cozy jacket. It's just a fleece bomber style jacket with pockets on the front. This one has been very well loved, but I didn't make this one in 2021. I actually made it at the end of 2020 when I was developing the pattern, but you'll see pictures of this on the product listing. I did make more samples. This pattern was drafted to be made out of both woven and like stretch knit fabrics. The other samples that I made of this jacket are this canvas version. Um, I actually really like this one, and to be honest, I haven't really worn this one that much. And I don't even know why, because every time I see it, I'm like, oh, that's really cute. And then, I don't know, I just haven't really worn it that much, but I've kept it because I really, really like the style of it. And then I also ended up doing an expansion pack for the cozy jacket so that you could turn it into a, like, shacket style, a denim style jacket. And so this is just a sample that I made out of a white denim and it includes a pocket add-on, instructions for adding a pocket to the front of the jacket and a convertible collar. I really like how that turned out. I also ended up using the cozy jacket to make a sweater. I really just wanted kind of a lightweight drapey sweater uh, that was kind of like oversized to wear around the house. And this is one of the items that I have actually worn a ton. I mean, it's not like anything super fancy or super special, but I wear it constantly and I just use the cozy jacket pattern to make this shirt. Instead of cutting two pieces for the front bodice, I just cut it on the fold and then I created a neckband to finish off the neckline. I also narrowed the sleeves on this so that they weren't as wide. They kind of narrow down toward the wrist. And I just really like the kind of marled pattern of the sweater knit. So yes, I love this sweater and it was very, very easy to make. I should probably actually do like a little tutorial on how to make a sweatshirt out of the cozy jacket pattern. It is actually quite easy. But yeah, love this one. And then the next thing that I made was the comfy lounge set. So I made these pants. These are This is just the comfy pants pattern. 
and it's just a very simple elastic waist knit stretchy fabric pants pattern with inseam pockets here and then I made some matching t-shirts to go with it. This is one of the t-shirts that I made. The t-shirt pattern comes in two styles. It's got uh, one version that has a crew neck and then another version that has a scoop neck. And I have made so many of these tees and I actually did a video showing how to hack that tee pattern into several new styles this summer because it's just a really great base tee pattern and it's really good to use as like a knit sloper pattern. So there's a lot that you can do with that if you wanna kind of try out some hacks for that pattern. So the next pattern that I worked on in the spring of 2021 was the Ava dress. And so this is just like a simple faux wrap dress and it has kind of an extended shoulder. So it kind of goes over the tip of the shoulder a little bit for a little bit more modern silhouette. And it comes in two lengths. It comes in like a short length and then the maxi length. This one was one that I made when I was developing the pattern. And so I made a few changes to it before I made the final samples. But the samples that I made for the product listings are this red version here, which is super cute on. I actually haven't had a chance to wear this anywhere because I really don't go many places outside the home where I need to wear a dress. But yeah, this one is super cute and I'm kind of waiting for an opportunity to wear this one somewhere. The version B is this maxi length. And this one, again, I haven't had a chance to wear it anywhere, but I really love this dress. It hangs really beautifully. And I did a sew along for the Ava dress here on the YouTube channel. And so you can see me actually making this version here. And then I also show this version on in the final reveal shots. This was also a sample that I made while I was developing the pattern. I wasn't sure exactly how I was going to design the front bodice. And so this was one that I did that was a wrap style. And I ended up not doing the wrap style as the final pattern, just because the instructions were getting a little bit convoluted for the way that it was kind of coming together. And I, I thought it was getting a little too complicated. So I decided to kind of scale it back and make it a little bit more simple. But this dress actually turned out super cute. I have worn this dress before. It looks really great on. And the only thing that I might change about this is I might make it into a shorter length dress just because my personal style, I don't really wear maxi dresses that much. The way it fits is very, very figure flattering. I know flattering can be kind of a triggering word sometimes, but it is a very flattering dress and I really love wearing this dress. I feel very pretty when I wear this dress. So the next thing that I made was this birdie button up. So the birdie button up is one of my most popular patterns that I've designed. And I have a sew along for the birdie button up here on the YouTube channel as well. Summer of 2020, I made myself a white linen, like a tissue linen birdie button up. And I love that shirt. I still wear it all the time. It's getting a little bit dingy. I need to probably like dye it a different color because it's starting to get a little bit like off white and not so much white. And so in the summer of 2021, I decided that I wanted to make another lightweight kind of summer weight birdie button up shirt that would be good for layering. And I didn't want to just make another white one. So I made this really nice blue one. And this fabric is like a, I think it's like a, a tinsel fabric. It's super lightweight. It feels kind of like a cotton lawn, but like softer. It's, this has been a great shirt. I wear it a lot. And you've probably seen me wear this and the white one in several of my videos. And then also the way that I designed the pattern, I tried to design it so that it had a little bit of shaping at the waist. It is a very loose fit shirt, but it still kind of has a very nice silhouette to it. And then I also did a curved hemline for this shirt, which I think is just a very, I just feel like that curved hemline is just, it's just, it's just nice. It's just really nice on a button-up shirt. This pattern is very near and dear to my heart and it has been a very popular pattern. I have the sew along and I have the placket sew along for this shirt. Next up is this Romy wrap top and it comes as a peplum blouse and as a knee length dress and it's just a very romantic pretty wrap blouse. It has a button closure at the, at the sides instead of like a tie closure. So the Romy wrap top comes with like a three-quarter length sleeve and the sleeve is finished with a cuff. I wanted to do a pattern extension for a bishop sleeve so you can see the sleeve is a little bit bigger and this one is a full length sleeve. So it has a little bit of sleeve drama which is nice. And so I did a sew along here on the YouTube channel for this particular pattern. Anyway, I just, I just love how that one turned out. Okay, so now we're starting to get kind of into the summer. And this summer I ended up going home to visit my family for about a month. I was kind of itching to make some new stuff and I actually wanted to make some kind of simple stuff. And I actually made two pair of these pants and wore them both constantly. These are, oh, let me look at the pattern. Okay, yeah, so this is the McCall's pattern M8221. You can see that. This is an awesome beginner friendly pattern and I mean they, these came together so so quick and they just it's just a simple elastic waist pant 
with inseam pockets. It was perfect. Now it comes as a shorts pattern. It's actually not a pants pattern. I just lengthened it to make it into like a long linen pant. So I wore these pants constantly this summer. It was like all I wanted to wear. They were just so easy and comfortable. And especially in the summertime when it's hot, it's like, I just didn't want to wear jeans. I didn't want anything like close to my body. And I also didn't really want to wear shorts every day, even though I definitely wore shorts. Oh, I actually made shorts out of that pattern too. I forgot about that. I did have a pair of shorts that I made out of this linen fabric that I wore constantly. Love those shorts. So yeah, definitely recommend this pattern. It's super, super beginner friendly. And even if you're not a beginner and you just want a quick sew, love this pattern. So next, I love, love, love these overalls that I made. And this was another McCall's pattern. And I actually ended up hacking the pattern. I used the McCall's 8162 pattern. And this is just like a very basic overalls pattern. And they're showing it here. Oh, and it's pants. Oh, wow, I didn't realize that. It would actually be really, really cute pants. I just wanted like a really simple overalls pattern. I wanted something that was kind of fitted, but something that was comfortable. And I really wanted to make a pair of overalls out of linen. So again, while I was home visiting my family, I decided to make this overalls pattern and I just hacked the waist. Instead of doing buttons at the side seams at the waist, I just sewed it together and then put in the elastic and made a little casing for the elastic, doing an elastic waist. These were so, so, so cute. I didn't wear them that much, but the times I did wear them, I was like, this is the cutest outfit ever. And that brings me to this square neck top, which is actually looking a little bit kind of sad right now. Like the, I had to put a little bit of elastic in here to keep this from gaping open at the chest. This is a hack that I did of the comfy tee pattern that I was talking about earlier. It is a fully lined t-shirt with a square neck, but this shirt was like my uniform all summer long. I wore it with both pairs of these linen pants that I made and I wore it with the overalls and it looked so stinking cute. It was so comfortable, but with the square neck, I still felt like I was trying to bring it a little bit with the style. I didn't feel like I was just wearing a t-shirt and a pair of slouchy pajama pants, even though that was basically what I was wearing. But this summer I was really enjoying the look of the fitted tee with elastic waist flowy pant and I will definitely be making more of these t-shirts next summer. I may try to dye this. That would actually be a good way to continue getting more life out of this shirt. My next item that I made was this Hannah Tank hack. The Hannah Tank is one of my more beginner friendly patterns and it's also a really great pattern for hacking, which is what I did with this. So for this pattern, the only thing that I changed was I did a lining for it. I added a ruffle to the sleeve and I added elastic at the waist to make it into a peplum top. And I have a video here on YouTube for how I did that. And it's a very simple hack for this pattern. And I think this would be adorable as a dress too. So maybe this coming summer, I'll make a dress for myself using the same technique. It's just a very sweet, nice, summery tank top pattern. So next up is another Romy wrap top hack. So for this one, I actually did a faux wrap top. So I just basically connected the front bodice pieces for the top. And I just did like a gathered skirt for the peplum on this shirt. I also used um, a vintage pattern to create a ruffle here at the neckline. And I really love this. I used the Bishop Sleeve expansion pack for this one. And this is some fabric that I got from Mood Fabrics. They have like a collection of like Mood exclusive rayon prints that are just beautiful. So I ordered a few of those this, this summer. Love how it turned out. And I actually had to wear this to a doctor's appointment and I got a lot of compliments on it. And I was very proud of myself. So next, oh gosh. So next up is this dress that I made. This is actually a vintage pattern that I got. So a couple of years ago now, it's been a while, I went to the thrift store and they had literally hundreds of vintage patterns. Like it was amazing. I can't even remember how many patterns I got. It was a lot. I have several patterns in my stash that are these vintage patterns and I've been itching to make them and I finally was able to get to this one. So this was actually the new look 6064. That's what the pattern package looks like. And it's just kind of like a, a fun 90s sort of slip dress style. It has a couple of options that have like a little flutter sleeve, but they're, it doesn't come with like an actual full sleeve. So I wanted to do a version that I could wear in the fall that had a long sleeve. I kind of took the Romy wrap top bishop sleeve actually and modified it to fit this pattern. I really love this dress. I love the fabric and the pattern and everything. But again, I don't really wear maxi dresses and I think I was kind of like doing a little bit of aspirational sewing when I made this. So I really 
want to either shorten this to a knee length because this is like really long. I either want to shorten it to a knee length or I want to just shorten it to a top because actually when I was making this I was kind of inspired by a top that I saw on Reformation. So I think this would actually be really cute as a top with jeans. Oh, also this shirt is another one that I made this summer. This one is... This is the McCall's 7969. And this pattern has been extremely popular. Like in the last couple of years, I've seen so many people make this pattern and I know why, because it's just a very beautiful shape and drape. And I've actually seen it made in like cottons and cotton lawn and rayon and linen. And it just looks so beautiful on everyone. Highly recommend this pattern. The only thing about this pattern, I got the wrong size and I kind of wish that I would have made a size smaller because I do feel like the neckline is a little bit big and like kind of, you know, it kind of slides back and anyway, but I still wear this all the time. It's very comfy and I feel very pretty and flirty when I wear it. Uh, but yeah, this has been a good pattern. Next up is jeans. I'm obsessed with making jeans, absolutely obsessed. In 2021, I decided to start trying to draft my own jeans. That was kind of a goal of mine. And I actually had kind of considered trying to release a jeans pattern toward the end of last year. Um, I, to be honest, I got a little intimidated and I was like, I don't know if I'm ready. I don't know if I'm ready to dive into jeans yet. I didn't do it last year, but I definitely want to release a jeans pattern eventually. I think that making a pair of jeans is like one of the biggest accomplishments when you're sewing clothing for yourself. And it's actually not that hard to sew a pair of jeans. It's a lot of detail work, but I, I mean, if you're patient, you can do it. It's definitely doable. So anyway, let me, let me just get to the jeans here. So the first pair of jeans that I drafted for myself were these white jeans. And this was kind of like a wearable muslin. These fit really, really great. And I was actually really, really proud of these. And these were like a huge confidence boost in my jeans making journey. So these were the first pair that I drafted for myself um, that were actually wearable. So I ended up toward the end of 2021 copying a pair of the Levi's ribcage jeans. So I really just wanted to see like what the shape of the pattern pieces looked at and again compare it to the things that I was drafting on my own, which is a really good idea by the way. I think you should definitely do that if you're interested in drafting your own patterns. Anyhow, <laughs> so I decided to copy these Levi's ribcage jeans and I made these jeans. So these were originally not white. And if you saw my bleen, bleen, if you saw my jeans bleaching video, you will understand why these are white. Yeah, I had kind of like a major mishap in bleaching. I think for the summer, I'm actually gonna cut these off into shorts. I think they would just be really cute as a pair of shorts. But yeah, I was kind of heartbroken that I bleached these, but I ended up making myself an identical pair. <laughs> I'm very happy I did. I've been wearing these a lot. I feel like I got my jeans back. Um, but yeah, these are the same Levi's ribcage copy pattern with adjustments that I made in that other video. And I also made a pair of black jeans. These are actually not totally finished. I need to just hem the bottom. They're still kind of raw in the hems. But for these, I wanted to experiment with doing a button fly. Um, but these, I just did like a really simple button fly, kind of similar to the button fly on the lander pants. But yeah, these are just the black denim jeans. I really, really love these. It turned out so stinking cute. Um, excited to wear these. Just need to hem them. I also made a pair of Ponty knit pants out of that same jeans pattern. So back in December, I actually needed some black pants last minute. Originally wasn't planning on making any, but I went around to all these different stores and I had zero luck finding a pair of pants that fit and looked good and felt good and had the right leg shape. And I was just like really frustrated. And I was actually kind of reminded of why I love making my own clothing so much, especially pants. Like bottoms are the hardest thing to fit for me. I have a little bit more flesh in the hips and the butt than I do in my waist. And so I always end up running into the problem of things just gaping at the waist or either being too tight in the hips. I'm also tall, so things are never long enough, which is very frustrating. And anyhow, I made these Ponty pants. They are so, so comfortable. They're basically jeans. I, they have a yoke on them and everything. They just don't have any pockets because I was kind of making them quickly, but they fit so good because obviously the pattern was made for my body. I love the leg shape. They're kind of a flared leg opening that I can wear with boots or like heels or, you know, kind of dress them up a little bit. So yeah, these turned out great. They fit great. They're very comfortable. Um, and I would say these are a success. I also wanted to, make myself a corduroy skirt. 
and I just wanted like a really cute skirt that I could wear with tights and boots and like a sweater or like even a dressier top that I could kind of dress up or dress down. So I made this corduroy skirt. Ooh, it's got lots of lint on it. That's the only thing about corduroy. And this is actually the Ava skirt from Sew Over It Patterns. Yeah, I love this skirt. I'm so happy with this. Um, one thing that I made for fall that I absolutely love is this cozy jacket pattern hack. So I have a video for this here on the channel for how I made this jacket. And I used the cozy pattern and the cozy pattern expansion pack. I made a few little modifications to the collar and the placket. I made them just a little bit bigger just because this fabric is a little bit beefier and I thought that the scale would look a little bit better if it was bigger. But yeah, this is just a really great kind of transitional weather piece. Super cute. And then the last thing that I will share with you is another cozy jacket pattern hack. <laughs> so I actually, oh God, it's got tape stuck to it, okay. So this is another pattern hack for the cozy jacket. And I actually have a video coming up for this. I have filmed this and plan to share it here on the YouTube channel, but it's just another fleece cozy jacket. It's very comfy. Again, I just lengthened the bodice, added a drawstring at the waist, kind of added a little contrast pocket here and a contrast zipper. And yeah, I really love how this turned out and I'll be sharing more about that soon. So yeah, I think that is it. For the most part, I think I did a pretty good job of kind of keeping my sewing projects manageable. Definitely tried to like rein it in with the fabric purchases this year because um, I went crazy in 2020, like really crazy with fabric. So yeah, I definitely think I was a little bit more intentional this year about the things that I was making for myself and I'm really happy with a lot of the things I made. If you enjoyed this video and you would like to see more from me, be sure to subscribe and hit that little bell icon. That way you'll be notified when I release new videos in the future. I've got lots of stuff planned for this year and I would love for you to stick around. If there's anything else you'd like to see from me, be sure to leave me a comment below and let me know. Okay, I think that is all I have for you today. I will see you in the next video. Bye. rambling. Okay. But I didn't. Okay.